I'm making a retro dining chair using simple materials and techniques. I found a reference image online and converted the measurements onto some graph paper. I'm making my best guess at the shape of the piece that supports the back and forms the front leg. I got this 16 gauge steel wire when I was making a clay sculpture. I'm starting out by bending the wire with my fingers into roughly the correct shape. I'm cleaning up the wire bends using some pliers. Once I created the right angles for the first leg, I used it as a template to make the second leg. If you're making multiple chairs, I'd make all of the pieces you'll need at the same time to get them as close in shape and size as possible. I'm trimming the front leg against my template. I'm trimming the second leg to match and using this little clip to hold the piece of wire so it doesn't fly across the room. I came up with this idea after seeing Carol use magnets for a similar purpose. To differentiate the front legs from the chair back, I put a little piece of painter's tape on each of the legs. Based on the chair height, I sketched my best guess for the shape of the chair back. I trimmed across the top, one side, and across the bottom. To make the chair back perfectly symmetrical, I folded the template in half and cut the other side to match. I used some thick chipboard from a notepad to cut the back. I'm adding a slight curve to this piece of chipboard using my fingers. This chipboard is about double the thickness of cereal box, so you can just glue two pieces together to come up with the same thickness. To lock the shape in place, I'm using some thin super glue. When you coat the front and back of paper products with liquid super glue, it makes it nice and strong. I cut out a chipboard seat and added glue to the front and back of that piece as well. I needed to make the seat before shaping the rear legs. Each of the two back legs are connected to this front piece that has two 90 degree bends. I'm beginning the bend of the rear legs about an eighth inch in from the edge of the seat. I bent one of the legs and eyeballed it to get the second leg about the same angle. I'm using some felt to add a little bit of batting to the back of the chair. I'm gluing down the piece of felt one half at a time to get more control over the positioning. If you prefer, you can glue a piece of felt on that's too big and then trim it to fit once it's attached. I glued the chipboard seat to some cardboard and added a layer of felt as batting. 112 scale chairs have a seat height of about one and a half inches. I made the front legs one and a quarter inches tall to accommodate a quarter inch thick cushion. To upholster the bottom cushion, I started by tacking down each of the four sides. To make it look neat and tidy, you can fold the excess fabric at the corner like I'm showing you here. That's what I should have done, but that's not what I did. I was trying to avoid having folds at the corner, so I tacked down the fabric and ended up with these ridges underneath the seat. It created ripples around the edges of the fabric and the ridges underneath posed some problems when I went to add the legs to the chair later. I left some links in the description from YouTubers who show how to upholster properly. I went rogue for the seat back as well, but it turned out a lot better. Instead of adding hot glue to the back piece of chipboard, I added hot glue around the edges. I am pressing the edges into the hot glue. I was able to take my scissors and trim off the excess fabric flush with the back. I did a little test and realized this technique doesn't work well on a thick cushion, but it worked great for this really skinny back piece. To imitate that retro look of mid-century vinyl, I painted the fabric with a mixture of Mod Podge and red paint. I don't know if adding the paint was necessary, but that's just what I did. Once the first layer dried, I did a second coat. To glue the legs in place, first I tacked the metal wire down using some hot glue. For a more permanent bond, I used a liquid super glue. 
While the glue was still wet, I used my craft knife to remove the lump of hot glue on the inside of the wire. I needed to remove the bump because the front leg wire needs to be attached to the rear leg wire without a gap in between. Make sure your legs dry in the correct position. I'm using a flat surface to cut the rear leg to the proper length. When the seat is parallel to the flat surface I'm using, I'm marking it to cut it. There's probably another way to do this, but when I'm making miniatures, I like to measure as minimally as possible. I sat the chair on its legs and glued the back in a place that looked right and level. Because of my lumpy bottom, there's a gap between the legs and the bottom of the seat. I'm filling the gap using a precision tip bottle filled with wood glue. I allowed this to dry and added a couple layers to make sure there weren't any gaps or holes of missing wood glue. I also coated the entire back to smooth out the super glue. I used a couple items to prop this up and let this dry level so the wood glue wouldn't pool at the top or the bottom of the back. This dries nice and smooth and can be painted whatever color you'd like. My wood glue filler is pretty see-through, so I'm backing it with some black. I'm shoving the paintbrush under the legs all the way up to the wood glue I added. For the final step, I'm using some red paint to cover up the wood glue from the outside. There was light showing between the seat and the leg, which looked really odd. This wood glue and paint method fixed it. I tidied up a bit after painting using a q-tip dipped in rubbing alcohol. Nail polish remover probably would have been better, but I didn't have any. The cut wire is pretty sharp and could scratch your dollhouse floors. I'm adding some glue on the bottom of each leg and a bit up the sides to make sort of a stopper like you would see on full-size chairs. Once it dries, you can't really see it, but when I place it on the tile, you can hear the difference. If I was making this again, I would protect the wire from the pliers because I did create some indents while shaping. I'd also make the back of the chair a bit of a different shape. Instead of coming in so angular on each side, I would make the bottom a bit wider. I painted the back brown because I'll be repainting this entire chair to use in a secret upcoming project. I wanted to go with classic diner red for the video and brown doesn't look too hot in a thumbnail. Thank you so much for watching until the end.